Hi everyone, it's Arman. I hope you're fine. Today I want to read a beautiful book called My Strange Thinking Parents. I want to say a special thank you to Zeno Sorder, author of this book, for sending me his great book. I really appreciate that. Thank you so much. Okay, now let's melt into the book, everyone. To my immigrant parents and to all parents who burden and narrow their own lives in the hope that their children will be free to go further. It goes without saying that all children believe their parents to be strange. Mine were unusual for a different reason than most. Before I was born, my parents had come from far off lands. They had all shoes and empty pockets. Like all good parents, they did their best to hold me safely above the daily troubles they faced. My father carved me beautiful toys from cedar branches. They're actually beautiful, but the most beautiful is the fox. My mother would quietly sing me to sleep. Can I tell you a secret that every heart knows? Love is a circle, round and round it goes. And my love for you grows beneath this proud skin. Though our lives may be humble, we are giants within. Every morning, my parents will go to work in the city. They struggle to get by. Still, they try to give me the same as the other children. For my third birthday, my parents went to see the baker. We would like to buy a beautiful birthday cake, but we can't afford your price. Is there something we can trade with you? My parents asked. Five centimeters should do it, said the baker. Five centimeters of what? They asked. Your height, of course, replied the baker. A few years later, when I was old enough for school, the principal kindly requested only eight centimeters for each year of schooling. Then there was the uniform, shoes, and books. As the years passed, I grew taller. My parents shrank further and further. Of course, there were good things about having short parents. Running races were much more fun. Sometimes I even let them win. We all comfortably fit in our small bed and could share the same clothes. Most importantly, there was more room for dancing in the kitchen. My parents continued to shrink. Even though their work became harder, they kept on going. This is the shape of our lives now, they told each other. But as I grow older, the children began calling me names. Their words made my chest ache. I didn't want us to be different. I was as sure as a boy could be that this was all my parents' fault. I pleaded with them to stop shrinking, to be just like all the other parents. I could feel my mother's chin tremble as she told me. Those children think we are different, but we are not. Our hearts are just as big. Our love is just as good. My parents continued to give. Their world became smaller. I couldn't stop it from happening. I began my first 
job as soon as I finished my studies. I was a young man who was beginning to grow into himself. By the time I started a family of my own, my parents were as tall as a teacup. Now there was no need for them to give any more. I had learned from their example to wear my differences with my back straight and my head high. Their belief in me had grown into my courage. I built a new house for them that didn't creak or groan. Over time, I feel that house with furniture carved from cedar branches. On peaceful afternoons, when the wind settled and the trees stood still, they would venture outside. And as they watched the sunset beyond our small garden, I would quietly sing, Can I tell you a secret that every heart knows? Love is a circle, round and round it goes, and my love for you grows. Beneath this proud skin, though our lives may be humble, we are giants within. The end. I hope you enjoy this beautiful book, and I want to say another big thank you to Zeno Sorder. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe. Bye.